Hello, everyone, and thank you for watching. My name is Lindsay Remor. I'm a postdoc at McGill University with the ACTOR project, the Analysis, Creation, and Teaching of Orchestration, which is an international partnership of artists, scholars, and scientists working on projects related to timbre and orchestration. Although the linguistics of timbre is a relatively new subfield, interest in the language people use to communicate about timbre has been evident since timbre research gained interest in the 70s. Tambor's multidimensional semantic space has drawn increasing interest from scholars, particularly in recent years. This initial research offers converging evidence that timbral vocabularies can hold intersubjective reliability and are constrained by discrete conceptual schemas, particularly within musical and cultural discursive communities. This perspective on timbral vocabulary is developing in contrast to traditional views, which as noted by Walmart and Kendall 2018, have branded the practice of timbre description as vague, imprecise, or unsystematic. In an article I wrote with David Huron published in Psychomusicology in summer 2020, we offered a 20 dimensional model reflecting Western musicians' conceptions of qualia associated with typical instrument sounds through verbal descriptions. This model, built with the intention that it could be used in music analysis and studies of orchestration, was empirically derived through a multi-stage study. An initial timbre lexicon was generated through interviews with musicians in which they were asked to imagine and describe a series of musical instrument timbres. Content analysis of the transcripts yielded the 77 categories. To reduce the dimensionality of the model, participants in a subsequent rating task imagined the timbres of the 20 instruments previously described in the interviews, judging each on these categories using seven-point rating scales. Interpretation of principal component analyses and supplementary polls resulted in a final 20-dimensional model. Since these dimensions form the foundation of the timbre trait profiles, I'll take the time now to read through the shorthand labels for each dimension. They are rumbling low, soft singing, watery fluid, direct loud, nasal reedy, shrill noisy, percussive, pure clear, brassy metallic, raspy grainy, ringing long decay, sparkling brilliant, airy breathy, resonant vibrant, hollow, woody, muted veiled, sustained even, open and focused compact. The goal of the current study was to create a set of tools for music analysis, specifically by mapping how different musical instruments tend to be circumscribed conceptually within this 20-dimensional model. While timbre, of course, varies within instruments, typical timbres produced by a given musical instrument result from an instrument's physics and acoustical features. These acoustical features, either individually or in combination, may contribute in part to the determination of an instrument's semantic affordances via cultural or ecological pathways. That is, some prototypical instrument sounds seem better suited to convey certain meanings than others. For example, Hailstone et al. 2009 found that affect recognition of melodies was influenced by pairing the melodies with particular instruments, and Huron et al. 2014 observed that participants' judgments of an instrument's capacity for sadness were correlated with acoustic properties known to contribute to sad prosody in speech. It's helpful to think about these timbre trait profiles in terms of personality descriptions. Someone might be accurately described as having a bubbly personality, for example, but that's not implying that they're going to be equally bubbly in all circumstances. This is still a useful description to understand them and how they might be likely to behave in certain cir circumstances. The timbre trait profiles presented in this paper may prove useful in compositional pedagogy, music theoretical analysis, and future empirical studies of timbre. For example, the timbre trait profiles may serve as the basis for orchestrational recommendations by suggesting musical circumstances in which a given instrument is likely to flourish or to struggle, valuable information for the practices of composition and orchestration. In analysis, the profiles provide a means for a theorist to quantify moments where musical instruments are employed prototypically and where the written music requires instruments to act against their semantic affordances, perhaps undermining listener expectations of an instrument's timbral character. This may be particularly relevant to developing an understanding of timbre's contribution to musical meaning. Orchestrational analysis may also benefit from information about instrument semantics. Additionally, these results may be helpful for future timbre experiments. For example, the profiles could help inform stimuli selection, or the reported distance metrics may offer an appropriate operationalization of timbral contrast. Participants were musicians, and recruitment was aimed particularly at those with experience in large ensembles containing a variety of instruments. 
Recruitment took place through listservs and through social media, as well as the Ohio State University School of Music participant pool for a total of 243 participants. All participants took the same Qualtrics survey via web browser. On average, participants were 33 years old and reported 21 years of regular musical practice. Participants were asked to imagine the sounds of and subsequently characterize a subset of 11 common Western instruments according to the 20 dimensional tamper qualia model. This task was descriptive and normative, that is no a priori hypothesis was tested, rather the goal was to generate these timbre trait profiles. To characterize an instrument, participants had to report moderate or better familiarity and vividness for that instrument. For each target instrument, participants first rated the familiarity of the instrument. Next, they were instructed to imagine the instrument playing a single sustained sound. Instructions requested that the participants imagine a professional sound rather than that of a beginner or amateur and a typical rather than an unusual sound that an instrument might make. They then rated the vividness with which they were able to imagine that sound. Finally, participants were asked to reimagine the sound and make ratings on the 20 dimensions. Participants were provided with the full dimension descriptions and asked to rate how well each dimension described the instrumental sound they were imagining by using a scale that ranged from does not describe at all to describes extremely well. The 34 instruments rated in the study here on the slide represent standard instruments of the orchestra and wind ensemble. Included are a number of percussion instruments for saxophones, piano, and harpsichord, with the aim of being able to apply these profiles to wind ensemble and chamber music as well as orchestral music. Means and medians for 34 instruments on each of the 20 dimensions represent the quantitative timbre trait profiles. To summarize the findings, this slide lists each of 20 dimensions along with the instrument that was most highly rated on average on that dimension, along with that mean rating. We can see rumbling low is the highest rated dimension for six instruments more than any other dimension. Percussive, sparkling brilliant, and pure clear are also relatively frequent as top descriptors, occurring for four instruments each. The next step is to visualize the data. I've used radar plots as pictured here. Around the circumference of the circle are listed the 20 dimensions. The circle radius goes from one on the inside to seven on the outside, where one indicates participants didn't think the term applied to the timbre, and seven indicates the term applied maximally to that timbre. Thus, we can see the flute received its highest ratings on pure clear, airy breathy, and soft singing, for example. Here's a slide with six of the profiles. I've picked out fairly different ones, so you can get a quick visual impression of instruments from different families. On visual inspection of all of the plots, it's evident that instruments generally do have distinctive profiles, as we'd expect, yet instrument family resemblances among profiles are also apparent. For example, the radar plots for the string instruments are visually similar. These types of similarities are also apparent among grasses and woodwinds. Verbal snapshot profiles, such as the one here, provide the top six rated descriptors and the bottom three lowest rated descriptors for each instrument. That's because timbre trait profiles are often likely descriptive of what an instrument is not as of what it is. This is an important um, consideration when determining future applications of these profiles. So we can see that the clarinet is soft singing, sustained even, woody, um, things we would expect, but it's also important that it's not brassy, metallic, percussive, or raspy grainy. Next, we can consider some ways of understanding relationships among instruments in the 20-dimensional semantic space. Euclidean distances and hierarchical clustering and multidimensional scaling as visualization. The Euclidean distances themselves between pairs of instruments in the 20-dimensional semantic space have the potential to provide useful measures for future research as operationalizations of semantic distance. In theorizing orchestration practices, for example, semantic distances between instruments may play a role in how composers create timbral echoes, contrasts, or transformations. For example, a gradual timbral transformation might be better accomplished through small steps in the semantic space, while an effective stark contrast might be easily realized through the juxtaposition of timbres that are semantically distant. Apart from theorizing existing practices, semantic distances could also serve as the basis for artistic experiments in orchestration. The average Euclidean distances for each instrument suggest which instruments have timbres that are generally more closely related with the other 33 instruments and which stand out as the most distinct in timbre description. Instruments with the lowest average distances include alto sax, viola, violin, tenor sax, and soprano sax, while instruments with the highest average distances include crash cymbals, woodblock, contrabassoon, snare drum, and bass drum. 
these timbres are the most distinct relative to the rest of the group. In general, the percussion instruments have higher average Euclidean distances. This is consistent with the observation that while instruments within families like strings and brass often tend to have similar timbres, percussion timbres are notably varied. Hierarchical clustering provides a means of visualizing relationships among the instruments based on Euclidean distances. One interpretation of this three cluster solution could be percussion, high instruments, and low instruments, although bass, drum, and timpani are residing with the low instruments instead of the percussion. So that suggests maybe dimensions related to pitch, like rumbling low, and maybe brightness, like sparkling brilliant, are what are separating these instruments out from the rest of the percussion. The cello, intriguingly, is among the high instruments, so that's possibly right, related to its reputation for having a singing tone, along with proximity to uh, the viola in its sound. Multidimensional scaling provides a second way of modeling the data using the Euclidean distances. The 3D solution, intriguingly, illustrates grouping by instrument family. For example, brass instruments appear to be grouped higher on this Z dimension and lower on the X dimension, separating them from the other instruments. While the territories of each of the instrument families are overlapping, the families seem to consistently occupy a particular area of this three-dimensional space. Note that the harp and the two keyboards, which have properties of both string and percussion instruments, also appear to occupy a kind of intermediate space in the 3D MDS solution between string and percussion groups. Exploratory factor analysis was performed in order to assess latent structure within the 20-dimensional space. I landed on a six factor model and I've labeled these factors material, envelope, presence, clarity, texture, and intensity. Common factors emerging from previous timbre semantic studies have often included variations on brightness, roughness, and fullness, such as the semantic dimensions of luminance, texture, and mass from studies by Zacharakis and colleagues. However, the exploratory factor analysis of the current data didn't appear to conform to this pattern. For example, the sparkling brilliant dimension, which includes the term bright, does not emerge as a primary factor. It instead loads with moderate strength onto the component that primarily focuses on material like brassy and woody, and it loads with weaker but non-negligible strength across four of the other components. Intriguingly, although by no means an exact mapping, the EFA suggests a latent structure which does bear some resemblance to the five-dimensional model pr proposed by Elliott et al. 2013. Notably, although their stimuli set was recorded and the current set was imagined, both used stimuli from Western orchestral instruments, suggesting that the stimulus set may have important ramifications for the latent structure of the data. In the study, participants were able to use a shared vocabulary to provide consistent and reliable characterizations. These characterizations furthermore offer a set of tools for future research, the quantitative timbre tray profiles, the visualizations, and an operationalization of semantic differences among instruments. I suggest that these tools may be able to provide insights into questions of orchestration, specifically addressing how instruments of different or similar profiles tend to be used in combination or contrast to delineate musical structures and shape expression in Western ensemble music. Exploratory work in this area is reported in my dissertation. The timbre trait profiles provide a novel way of discussing the relationships among linguistic characterizations of a group of instruments playing together in an ensemble. The use of consistent vocabulary among all instruments allows an analyst to pinpoint what semantic qualities one instrument offers that another does not. Averages for each of the dimensions in a given combination of instrument can be computed beat by beat, whereby graphical representations can be produced to illustrate development of semantic dimensions throughout the course of a piece and passages or formal sections can be characterized by the semantics of their instrumentation. While the timbre trait profiles provide characterizations of prototypical instrument timbres, further detail can be obtained from subsequent studies, especially regarding within instrument variability in timbre as a product of change in loudness intensity, duration, articulation, or pitch height and register. An IMPRESS article in Empirical Musicology Review studies semantics of variation in register and dynamics in oboe and French horn, and our ICMPC presentation, Mapping the Semantics of Timbre Across Pitch Registers by me and by several colleagues uh, in the ACTOR project. You might also be interested in comparing semantics of individual and combined instrument timbres by Noble, Soden, and Walmart, also all ACTOR colleagues, which investigates the semantics of lens. Finally, if you'd like to learn more, the article from the study reported here was published recently in Music ACNCA. You can find it using the QR code on the slide. Thank you so much for listening today. I'd love to hear your thoughts and answer any questions you might have.